Hi, here is Marco Villanius and I'm gonna talk to you about my seven principles of foresight. You see, over the years, I have been working with a lot of different types of the organization and businesses uh, and understanding where are the successes, where are the failures of those organizations have become a very important for me. Uh, and through that, I have noticed that, particularly when it regards where, whether we lean to the future, whether we lean to the few, uh, to future opportunities, understanding the future challenges, um, um, having a principle of how to actually uh, uh, to prepare for the future. All those things that make us to look more to the future to the, to the past. I've seen that time and again, some of the organizations seem to almost like a naturally stand uh, more leaning towards the future while the others are more leaning to the past. So over the years uh, these seven principles that I'm going to tell you about have become very clear to me that these are the types of principles that should be followed by any organization if they want to be successful in the long term. My first principle is very simple. Look to the future not to the past. And while this sounds easy, it's anything but easy. Because most of the data, most of the patterns of the behavior that we have actually comes from the past. Even to have an actual dynamic ongoing data is sometimes very, very difficult to get. So we rather lean to the information about the past and let that guide us into the future. What I'm saying is that while it is good to know what has happened in the past and we really should know it, that should not be the only guide for us towards the future. We need to see those type of uh, uh, weak or strong signals that tells us more about uh, how the world is actually changing and how we need to kind of uh, ride that change thrive on that wave in a way. The second principle, any organization, any business, even governmental organization, they always have the client. Now the issue about the client is that, well, whereas we are trying to kind of serve their immediate needs, even more important is to anticipate the future needs. So all these guys, you know, from Steve Jobs and, and others who built this new wave of uh, digital um, uh, systems and digital services, these guys did not think about that the right way to understand where they should head with their business is to go and ask people what do they read, read, need right now. No, they thought that they need to find something more deeper, something which is hidden in them, but it's not very obvious and they even cannot themselves articulate that. And then we are talking about the future needs, not the one, the needs that we are expressing right now. And anticipating those needs, uh, need, what does it take? It really takes a couple of things. It takes to understand what are the type of the forces out in the future that enable us to build businesses, concepts, ideas, all kinds of services, products that are useful in the future. And, and secondly, it is to get deep down into something which is very much sort of a, in our unconscious self to understand really what are the fundamentals that are driving that. And nobody did that in the 1990s better than Jeff Bezos with the Amazon when he started to lean his services, make the, the, the power of delivering fast and with a good price to the customer and informing customer very much what type of the options he or she has. This type of the very simple fundamental things that comes very powerful if you can really deliver them. That was something that uh, where Bezos was so good uh, to track. He was not so much interested in the books, but he was interested to understand how people actually 
behave, what is the basis of their behavior, what is the basis indeed they need. Now, that being said, uh, these needs that we are talking about is, is often also something that either uh, are more like a, a permanent needs, but as basic needs are our permanent needs. But then they are very much like a varying needs. We also create new needs. We didn't know that we needed uh, mobile phones in the 1980s. But now we can't even go out and have an hour walk in the forest without thinking that should we have that with us. So that has really become a new need. And this is the way the society and our minds work. Third principle I like to talk about in terms of the foresight is to make use of incomplete knowledge and information. In our world we often want very much sort of uncertainty so we are or searching for the certainty so that we really know how things go but things about the future has almost always uh, as some sort of a certainty it's pretty much certain that the sun is coming up also tomorrow morning there are kinds of things that we know for certain uh, but a lot of the stuff in our world is anything but certain but we need to make use of that type of the incomplete uh, knowledge uh, that we have about the future. And often that type of the knowledge is about some signals, some, some ideas that come from the future. I call them also invitations that come from the future. Something that you understand, you hear, the voice might be a faint, but something that tells you how different for instance some needs might be in the in the future or how the world is changing um, and particularly if it's against what you what you currently think it might sort of uh, feel like a distraction and and you still want to go your own ways because this is what you have been accustomed to but you need to listen to these signals weak or strong and, uh, and try to make sense of it. Does it bear any relevance to the way that you are doing your things and running your businesses? You always need to be questioning about yourself. Are you doing the right things? Or, or is, there, is there new information coming that should uh, push you to, to do things in a different way or having different type of the, uh, products and services? That is about the third principle. So, so the, you, you better be trying to get as much as information on your table and on the basis of that information you can then make, uh, make the, uh, 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 the decision. But don't be afraid of incomplete knowledge. The fourth principle is about expect the unexpected. Now the more complexity we have in our societies, the more there are type of the disruptions, changes of all kinds, sometimes transformation, even you could say metamorphosis of different kinds, that pushes you uh, into the totally new, new situation. Now, it's impossible for us to guess what those unexpected events are. They are simply unknown. But what we can do is that to always be prepared for this unexpected. Always be at ease with the unexpected, but also because when we are at ease with something new and surprising coming, we are all also able to act upon it much more. So it's kind of a preparation uh, for all kinds of things to come and then be uh, ready to act when the time has come. So it's like a good tennis player. Good tennis player is always very alert. What is happening next? Kind of a reading the signals, uh, but not in a tense way, but in an easy way. Because for any type of the information that comes from the future, we need to be at ease with that. Which doesn't mean that we are lazy about it, but we need to be at ease because then we are fully opening to that possible new information. The fifth principle that I want to mention to you is about this. Think long term and short term. Now, most of the operations 
are usually very much um, uh, focused on what is happening in the for on the short term to manage the operational and sort of a tactical duties of the organization. Usually it's also said that it's particularly the boards of the, of the organizations that need to take care for the long term. But most of those boards even actually deals predominantly about the short term issues. So that is something that we need to change. When I take um, my kind of a, um, experience with the boards in particular, I come time and again to see that the most of the boards think that they overly use their time for the short-term issues, whereas they should be dealing with the more strategic long-term issues. And indeed, we need to, in this world where there's a lot of changes and disruptions and a lot of those things that comes to our table and that needs immediate uh, reaction from us, it often takes us away from thinking about more long-term goals uh, which are different to what we see, what we need to do in the next year. So to stretch our minds into 5, 10, 20, 30, 50, even 100 years ahead. That is a difficult task, but that is exactly what is needed in our organizations and companies. Just because we know actually that in our world, if you sort of get lost uh, in, the, in this jungle and you just start to fight your everyday fight, so to say, and you're dealing with the burning platforms, so then there is a tendency that you underestimate and sort of underpower uh, your long-term uh, planning, your long-term ideals, your long-term goals. And this is exactly what we need to be doing. So we need to have a, in other words, kind of a clear balance between the long term and the short term. Because not just thinking about the long term is either not good. So we need to just to have the balance of that. My sixth principle uh, is simple. Dream productively. It is that often when we have this ideas how we want to develop and where we want to go next um, and then we make a kind of a strategy about it and then after that it goes to the shelf it gets buried by the dust that type of the strategy building that type of the kind of a ideation uh, that is left aside that we are not actually working on we're not thinking concretely how to make it an action uh, that's not very productive. And unfortunately, uh, it looks like uh, in this world we are making much too many those type of the strategies that never gets actually implemented, which are only there in the paper, and we think that the task has been accomplished as long as we have that strategy, but we're not really trying to implement. So my point is that once you start dreaming about the future, you need to dream it in a productive way which means that you start to look those actions that needs to be taken in order to attain that, uh, that, that long-term goal. Uh, and that dream thus may become true, which is the whole point of the dreaming in our case. So the last and the seventh principle that I want to mention is respect the knowledge. Um, in our world, we often go and search the information and the knowledge and the wisdom that is outside, somewhere out there. That's why we have a thriving uh, sector of businesses that are serving those organizations, different consultancies. I have been uh, seeing time and again that sometimes organizations misses what they have inside their organization. They don't listen they their own knowledge. They don't listen their own employees. The knowledge that has been gathered there over the years, uh, but instead they listen to those consultancies. Uh, so, which from my perspective means that they are not actually using the internal knowledge which is, which is there. And 
and it takes a good while and a, and a real good effort to actually to excavate that knowledge which is there because there might be um, a culture behind which is that well you just go and do your task as an as a employee in a certain position and, and, and that's the way that you, you bring your kind of a, uh, your own input. Uh, but in the successful and good organizations uh, they understand how critically important is to engage people, their ideas, particularly those ones that have been there for a, for a long time, but also those ones that are new and have some new fresh ideas and, and mix those ideas together in order to bring the internal knowledge which is there for the youth to the leadership and the decision making uh, of the organization. So, all in all, these are the seven um, 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 principles of foresight. Uh, I would say it's, it's not only applying uh, the way the organizations work, I would say it's also applying how the individuals work and it's definitely also applying how the countries in our world also uh, uh, are working. So to the extent that the, these individuals, organizations or countries are taking care about these seven principles and, and making sure that they are aligned with those principles, that they apply those principles, um, to me it seems that to the extent that they are applying this, they can be successful in the long term.